Um, I'm on. I came on a few seconds early because I never know with my internet what's going on. And it's been one of those days, so I thought I'd be safe, safer than sorry. So, okay, we're going to do this crazy thing. Um, <laughs> I have been, I hit the road running uh, from the moment I woke up, 5.30 this morning. I've been just racing, trying to catch up. And um, I have not, uh... hi Gail, it's great to see you. Um, and Angela from Costa Rica, Sally from Florida, great to see everyone. Um, so I, I have not, I've done a little bit of homework on the silk cocoon. I could not, hi Connie, I couldn't find much, but what I did found was sort of, hi Jean from the UK, um, what I did find was that, um, I'm just reading everyone, hello from Colorado and Lynn from Indiana, um, and Jerry. Uh, okay, so what I did find was that there are a couple of YouTube videos on the silk cocoon and they're making these kind of flowers uh, kind of thing. But other than that, I really didn't find much. So, hi, Freda. Um, so, and Barbara from Alabama. Um, so what I'm going to do, and Donna from Oregon, it's lovely to see so many of you here. That's wonderful. Uh, and thank you to those who are giving me thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Um, and bonjour, Anne. And oh, Jerry, the troublemaker. Okay, so I have to say, for those of you who don't know, it is Jerry. Hi, Donna. It is Jerry that really, we can thank Jerry for this live stream. Seriously because she's the one who in the Facebook group said, hello, from Georgia. Um, she's the one who in the Facebook group, hi, Alki, it's good to see you from the Netherlands. Um, okay, I've got to stop reading everyone's comments. Just know that if you're saying hi to me, I so love it and thank you. And I'm saying hi back, but I've got to stop reading them and otherwise I'm never going to get through this. So Jerry is the one who on Facebook innocently wrote, oh, why don't you do a live stream? She's not innocent. There was no innocence, but I'm just, I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt. Why don't you do a live stream? She says, helpfully. And I say, I'm thinking, live stream, are you kidding? I have no idea what to do with these things. But because I'm the one who will like never say no to a dare, I thought, why not do a live stream? I'm going to do a live stream. So here we are. You're seeing it as I'm doing it. I have no idea. I have no preconceived plans for this. I, As I said, I watched YouTube to see what I could find. There wasn't a whole lot. And so thank you, Jerry, for the dare, because, yeah, I'm not going to let that one sit. I'm going to turn you guys around, and we're going to figure this out together. I only have one, so I really can't mess up. <laughs> I was, um, Carol, a very lovely woman, sent me this beautiful package of silk hankies. They're from Trinway, as well as one silk cocoon. And I looked at it, and I thought, huh. I wonder what you do with that. And then I put it away. I didn't even take it out of the bag. So here we go. I'm turning you around. Hang on. I've got it. One of these days I'm going to get better at this, this part. Um, okay. Turning you around. Here we go. For those of you who get car sick, I hope you like, you know, buckled in there. I'm going to put this on the tripod so that we can have that stationary. I'm going to bring some lights over. Here we go. This one over. And someone wrote me, oh, you're so brave. And I thought, yeah, I kind of, either that or really dumb. I never say no to a dare either. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad I'm in, I'm in good company then. All right, you, all of you. So here we have, this is my linen piece, which you know, I just kind of do stuff on. And here we have it. It came in this little plastic bag. 
and it said dyed silk hankies, which I don't know, I you know, but this is what she had it put in there. Three, I thought I'd play with these too. They're kind of um uh well stiff. Um kind of like, you know, I don't know what this is exactly. It's some sort of silk something. But they're kind of cool, right? And I feel like I could stitch right over those. Those don't seem quite as challenging as this little egg here. Looks like a dinosaur, right? So, <laughs> oh my gosh, here's what I'm thinking. All right, here's what I'm thinking. First off, I'm thinking, well, what if we just like do something like this on it? Don't know, okay. Then I've got, I actually do have a little bit of paint that I mixed up here with some water. They're cocoons, they're silk cocoons. And I thought, well, I could sort of maybe do this. I don't know. So step one, pull out some dye stuff and paint on it and see what happens, right? And then I thought, well, you could kind of gradate around, right? Of course, now I'm going to have wet paint, and then I'm going to have to let it dry. So I don't know if this is a good idea or not. That's okay. We never we never think about these things. All right, let me get out another color. I'm going to go, I'll kind of go into like, um. so maybe a little orange, right? And maybe I do, I'm not sure about that. And now maybe I do a little bit of this one. I know, are all of you just kind of gasping in horror at what I'm doing here? I don't know, we'll see. I was thinking keep it in the kind of reds and um, What do you think? I don't know. Uh, let's see. We're going to do this. Hi, from Australia. Ooh, it's early for you. I was, I'm sorry, I couldn't do it later. I was thinking about my Australian and New Zealand friends because for them, it's super early. What, it's like five in the morning for you, something like that. I couldn't do it later. Usually, I like to do it around. Do yellow. Oh, Jerry, gosh, you know, she's just awful. I don't love yellow. Yellow's sort of hard for me. Maybe a golden yellow. Let's do that. Sort of something, you know? Hi, Louisa. Um, so typically I try to do these live streams at around 3 o'clock. That sort of seems to be the sweet spot because 3 o'clock still allows those of you in Europe. Aren't you fixating the silk thread? What does that mean? Aren't you fixating? Um, anyway, I try to do, I don't know what that means, Aoki. So I'm just kind of doing this. And now you could slice it in half. Sally, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I have my scissors here. I thought I would do part of it like dye, part of it like this. I kind of like this yellow. Not a bad idea, Jerry. She's always coming up with these ideas. Um, I usually try to do 3 o'clock. That seems to be the time when uh, most people can do it. It's still, uh, it's not too late for those of you in Europe and England. And it's not too, too early for those of you in Australia and New Zealand and that part of the world. Um, okay, so here we go. You know, that's something. That's kind of cool looking. I don't know. Sort of interesting. But uh, I can't really stitch with this now because I've made it all wet. See, Jerry says. Oh, my gosh, it's 4 a.m. You are either a night just like ridiculously up early or you are a diehard fan of this channel. Okay, are we doing this? Come on, let's do it. I don't even know what's inside. <laughs> Okay, I'm slicing it. I am slicing. I'm going to leave. Die Hard Fan. Oh my gosh, you're amazing. 
Well, I don't know. I think you get a prize. Okay. I don't want to get too much stuff on me here, but I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to do it like this so that if it falls, there. Oh, ooh, do you see this? Oh my gosh. Look at this. Do you all see this? I don't even want to touch it. Ooh, that's the worm, you guys. That's it. All right. I'm a little squirmy about these kinds of things, I have to tell you. That's him. That's the little, oh, poor little guy. Do you see him? It's a dead worm. Where's Merlin? Jean. <laughs> totally. I should call Merlin. He'll eat it. This is it. This is the little guy. Oh, I feel sort of bad. Start a silk farm, Gail. All right, here's the inside. So, okay, so I, I'm a little, <laughs> this was not what I expected. Don't be, <laughs> it's hysterical. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's a tiny little hardened bug. We say a hero on socks. <laughs> no. Oh my goodness. This thing. All right, I'm pulling this up. It's not, that's what I thought she was going to do, unravel the cocoon. Yeah, well, that would have been smart, right? This is the bug. This is the little guy who makes this. Look at him. Okay. All right. So here I've got, <laughs> I know, and I'm the one who's picking him up. I mean, there was a part of me that was screaming silently inside, like, Bleh! that kind of thing. All right, so here we have this, and he's too wet. Do you see how it's all coming off on my fingers, which is why I only did half of it. And that's the inside. I'm going to put this, stitch it into your part. Sorry, I forgot to warn you. Thanks, Jean. You could have... <laughs> You totally could have warned me that there's this creature inside. Oh my goodness. All right, we're putting we're putting the little guy over here. I'm showing you what I'm doing. I've put the the stitch it to your project. I know I could do like a couching. I might. I might couch it. There, you see, it's another dare. Oh my gosh. Okay, I've put this here. I've put the bug here. And here is my my little my little thingy. So um, people are saying you can find the end of the silk and unravel it. I I mean I don't have a clue what you even mean by that, but I'm assuming you know what you're talking about. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to <laughs> I'm going to oh you know you can't accuse me of not being somewhat entertaining at least. Okay, can you imagine if that thing had still been alive? I would have screamed. I would have screamed. I'm going to cut this off just this little bit. And I'm going to, um, here's what I'm thinking. Now, someone said you could stitch right into this. So I'm thinking, okay, I, I will. I'll stitch into it. I don't know how that's going to work, but let's give it a shot. I've got a little, um, I've had a horrid day at work. You've made me laugh. Oh, I'm so glad. Don't forget to stitch that worm into your, <laughs> you know, you know, you guys, I don't, I don't know that any of you are actually being so helpful, you know? All right. Let's see if I can stitch in here. Is it hard? It is, but look, I can pull a needle through. Okay, this is a little oriental linen. Now, what if we just did a little... Now, I don't want to cover this whole thing because doesn't that kind of defeat the whole purpose of this fabulous thing that this poor creature died to, you know, sacrificed himself? I saw someone stitch beads into it. Yeah, I think, like, it's a jewelry thing, right? You could do... So there's a little French knot. Um... We could do a little, I don't know if one would want to do turkey work because I think that if you start piercing holes too much, 
um, it's going to be a problem. But I can certainly do little French knots. And I can certainly, you could do an open buttonhole stitch over it. You could. Um, all right, so I'm going to do like a little cluster here of French knots. And then I think I'm going to switch to something with a little metallic in it and do something with that. Now, one of the things is it does make a hole. So um, you want to keep your your, um, you want to pierce it far enough away, right, that you're not going to just perforate the whole thing and it'll all collapse, I would imagine. It's pretty hard, like long drizzle out the top. Exactly. You could do a long drizzle. Um, okay, so I'm doing some Oriental Linen French knots right here. And then I'm thinking... I kind of like that, right? Um, that's what it looks on the inside. Let's see. I think I'm going to do... Okay, so... Um, so, what you, so you can see that you can do any kind of knot, right? Now doing like... And you could do a drizzle... I think doing something like a bouillon would prove somewhat challenging just because of the nature of this hard shell. You could definitely put beads on here. Um, in fact, let's see. Let's see. I've got... I'm curious what you'll do with it after you decorate it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Uh, me too. All right, here's my bead bag. Um, let's see, I've got some, like, I don't know if that would look, oops, I'm off camera. I don't know if that would look good or not because it's so the same color and I think it needs something a little different. But I have, I have some, Beads like this, those could be kind of fun, like the little green one especially, keeping in with the green. And then I have some larger beads, which I could also do. Um, you could put a button on here. You could... Um, you could just do a series of, you know, um, little seed stitches, sort of random, around. You could do, um, what else could you do? I don't think anything, of course, now I'm having trouble threading this. That's the thing about um, Oriental linen is it's plied, right? So you have tons of little, there we go, little strands that you have to thread. Um, let's see, here we go. I could just do that. Let's see what that looks like. And then, so that's kind of cool looking, right? You could also do a bead where you had the hole up here and then you did a French knot and then stuck your thread back down so that it, you know, it was kind of like adhered there. Um, I think I'm going to do a couple more French knots over here. And you can see what happens when you pierce it. So you don't want to make a mistake like I just did. Pierce it and then you know, say, oh, no, that wasn't a good idea. Well, guess what? Now you're stuck with it. So I'm going to have to do something over that hole. And let's do one more. Am I off camera? Yes. I'm going to do one more here. I bought a bag of them from Steph Francis. You did? I didn't even see that they had them at Steph Francis. I just made a huge order. 
I've been talking with James and Anna, the couple that own Steph Francis. They are so lovely. Um, I didn't even see they had a bad. I thought I knew that whole site. I mean, I've gone over there and bought just about everything they've got. Okay, uh, what else? This shouldn't be titled... An this should be titled Another Exciting Day with Ariane. <laughs> well, let's hope it's exciting. I don't know. Is this? Is this exciting? This would be good. Oh, my gosh, Oki, you have two bags? That's insane. These are expensive, I think. On Trainway, it was like they're $8 for one. Maybe they're cheaper at Steph Francis. And then what do you do with those bugs? I want to know what you do with the bugs which that bug is like a little hard rock. Um, I mean, you'd never know it was a bug. I could couch that into my piece. Okay, I'm going to do one more right here. And then I think I might do a couple more beads. Now, here's the thing about doing a drizzle. Um, I wonder if you'd want to come in and out of the same hole, I think, because these holes are pretty big. And I don't know. I needed this. Oh, good. Well, see, you're all laughing. Maybe at my expense. I'm not sure. But chain stitch around the bottom and couch down. Yeah, you know, I'm not actually really concerned about how I, well, <laughs> about how I'm going to apply this. These cocoons have a hole, so no bugs. Oh, they've taken the co they've taken the bugs out maybe. Right? All right, I'm going to go ahead and um I'm going to go ahead and and do a, a a French knot in here. This is a little tricky because I want this to uh, go down, you know, in the um, in the inside the hollow here. I don't, and I don't want it to come out. Um, but so I'm going to cut that off. All right, now should I add something? What do you think? I made a hole here. I feel like I should do something with that. Um. I don't think I want to get too crazy. I think I'm going to keep these colors sort of the same colors. Yes, most are debugged, thankfully. Yeah, because, you know, that was a little bit of a shocker, this little guy. Yeah. All right. Um, I think I might do... Let's see. What am I going to do? I think I might do this one... I think I'm going to keep with my oriental linen. All right, so you guys, you can do, I'm being kind of boring now, but you could do whatever you want, right? You could spice this up. You could add all kinds of things. I was thinking metallic, but I don't know what, oh, maybe I do, ooh, that's right. Maybe, maybe I do this. Maybe I do a color like this. This is my Aurora. Maybe I do this one. I almost died when that bug fell fell out you and me both oh my gosh that was a total shocker to me I had I was not expecting the bug nobody warned me about the bug okay I'm doing Aurora I decided to be bold and do my um Milner's needle which I should have done to begin with right and um I don't know I mean I could do like a little drizzle you know here or somewhere like little drizzles sort of out the side. I don't know about doing it right on the top. I don't want him to look like, you know, a bald guy with a comb over or something. Um, let's see what a drizzle does. Let's do a drizzle here. I'm going to anchor my needle into my wool mat like that. Of course, I'm doing a drizzle with an Aurora, which is a nightmare, but let's, I won't do it too tightly. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Okay, that's my Aurora. Nine. I did nine little guys. And Aurora is hard to do a drizzle. Um, it's hard because it's hard to thread again. It's hard to, 
it's hard with all that pile. It's hard. Uh, this may actually not work. It, um, I mean, I can't even, I can't see. And I don't know that I can even do this. I can't thread it. So let's see. Let me see if I can. And I'm not getting this little bit. So. Nope. Darn it. Okay, let's see if I can do this. I know everybody's holding their breath. There, I did it. All right, we're doing one drizzle. I'm not repeating that. Um, let me see if I can pull it through. What I don't want to do is pull it so hard that I just smash through this thing. So let's see. This is not easy. Okay, I've got to get my pliers out. Okay. Let's see. So there's that. Pulling it through. Um, for those of you who are taking the Dorset Button Workshop, oh no, what happened? It pulled right through. Well, it the knot pulled through. So anyway, that's how it would look. I'm not sure about, I mean, it would be fun if you had drizzle sort of oh, randomly in different places, but this didn't work. So, all right, so I'm going to just yank this out and we're going to go back to the first idea, which was French knot. And, um, but a drizzle's possible. That's, that was the point of that to show you that it was possible. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this through and then I'm going to do a little French knot here. And let's see if I can ow, pull that through. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I can do a whole bunch of little French knots sort of throughout this in different threads. Um, that would certainly be kind of cool looking, maybe with a few beads here and there kind of thing. Um, I'm going, I'm not going to do a lot of these only because um, I've got, I've got a three o'clock meeting. I've got to be, um, I've got to go for, so I don't want to spend too much time. Also, it's not that interesting to watch me doing random French knots on this little guy, but, and I wanted to show how, um, I wanted to sort of play around with how to, how do you attach this then to your piece, you know, so you've done whatever you're doing on here. And then, <laughs> hey, Anne. <laughs> oh my gosh, she sent me a photo of a, a little emoji worm. Um, yeah, so, you know, I don't want to spend, I could spend a lot of time on this. Um, I think I could definitely add different elements that would be interesting, different thread types, certainly some metallics. I was thinking the Aurora but I'm not sure it's metallic enough. You know, I think it needs more of a, a kind of look at me metallic. Um, and this just has that one little subtle thread running through it. I don't know. It might be enough. I'm going to do this one. Okay. I thought you were going to find a silk moth inside. Well, Connie, that's what I found inside. I mean, that's, that is it. That's the little guy who will turn into a moth. Okay. I'm having a vision. Paint it. Cut it in half like you did. Then have your thread come out the top and down along the sides like you have a bead covering. 
Yeah, you can try that for sure. A couple of feathers. Listen to all of you. See? All right. So here's what I, here's my challenge to all of you. I want all of you to think about how you would use this and how you would apply it and then show, post photos in the Facebook group. Silk cocoons. I'm going to do a little heading there. Now I'm, see, we can do this. It goes both ways, all of you. Okay, so I'm thinking, well, I have this circle here that I was showing the scroll stitch for, I can't remember, something. Why not put it here? And here's the thing. This can go down like a button. There's no reason why I can't just attach it like it's a button. So look, I'm going to do more, but there is no reason why you couldn't. Ooh, what's that? That's a big knot. How did that get there? Doesn't even make sense. Okay. Let's see what's happening here. There. Okay. So I'm going to put this down like this. It's kind of adhered, a you know, by that one thread. And now I'm going to come up and I'm going to grab a little bit of it. Come on. I need my. For those of you who are taking the Dorset Button Workshop, I highly recommend a pair of pliers because we're going to be doing some things that you're going to have a hard time pulling through definitely get, these are expensive. They're Lindstrom. I'll put the link in the, um, I use them for jewelry, but um, there are cheaper pliers out there for sure. I just love how these, they're expensive, but they're really easy on your hands. They're ergonomic, whatever. I just love them. I've had them forever. Um, you need a pair of pliers for sure for that Dorset button workshop. And I think you should stuff it first. Why? Why stuff it? I mean, it's it's hard. It's not going anywhere. Do you see? Do you hear that noise? It's not like a s stuffing. I'm not sure what stuffing would do. What would stuffing do? Tell me. Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to... What am I going to do here? I think I'm going to do a little knot. Why not? I've got knots below. I've got knots on top. I'll do a little knot here. I'm going to kind of center it and push that through there. And then I'm gonna pull this, see if I can. Nope, gotta use these guys. And okay, so it's kind of, it's kind of cool. You can, um, okay, so I'm gonna do another one here. Oops, not there, here, right there. Got to get my pliers. Oof. Okay. And I don't want to dis misshape this. So I have to be aware of not pulling this too tightly. And I'm going to do another little French knot here. And go down over here. And in this way, I'm going to be securing it kind of how I want it to sit on this circle. And it's a little off center, but that's okay. And I'm just going to go around with my needle um, piercing the side like this. But you know, you could do anything. You could do little boyo knots, right? That are come out the edge and then go down. And I don't want to pull that, so I got to be aware of that. Don't let it pull. And I'm going to do another that French knot there. Okay. Oops, I think it's petrified hard. Yeah, it's it's definitely not um it's not really so it's not soft. It's it's quite um it's hard. Yeah. But it's not so hard that you can't obviously stick a needle through, which is cool. 
Oops. Okay, so that's happened. So I have to go high enough that I don't just push it right out. And I don't want to shred the bottom of this, you know. You can also manipulate it a little bit. Like I'm pushing it a little bit, the bottom. Um, in a little. So I'm kind of making this, like I'm forcing the bottom to go down a little, go in a little, right? Because I'm not centered, so I'm sort of pushing it around a little bit, and um, let's see. Okay, I need to get far enough up from the edge that I don't rip into the bottom. And here we go with this one. Okay, and Let's, there we go. So that didn't work as nicely as I would have liked. I didn't pull the tension, so I've got like a little stitch there. So I'm actually gonna go back in here and I'm going to tweak it so that I get, so I'm gonna try to get a better French knot see what happens. See you later. Had a hard day. Oh, I'm sorry. It's good to see you. Um, okay, so we're going to go in here. So I've got like two more, I kind of made a mess of this. I don't like the way that looks. I may take it out later and redo it, um, or not. And let's see, so there's that. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of cool, right? I'm gonna do one more and I think that'll be it. And I'll see about, I'll see whether my, um, the other half has dried or not. I don't think it has, but we'll see. Okay, let's pull that through. Yeah, so I need to make sure that when I do these little French knots, I'm doing them so that the tightness, the tension, is, this is the second time I've done this. You know what, I'm gonna end this thread, I'm getting short on thread, and I'll start a new thread up. So, I mean, why fight this, right? When you don't have to. I'm gonna push this in through here, I'll cut this off, and I'm going to do a, another little length here of my Aurora, and then I'm going to play with that weird looking, um, with this, which is really strange. What if you pre-hooked a few holes before you started? Yeah, you could, you know, I mean, I, since I hadn't planned anything for this, <laughs> obviously. Um, I didn't, you know, I had no idea what I was doing. So I just sort of started jabbing at the thing. And, um, but yeah, if you had like a specific pattern and, and you knew you were going to do something very specific, I think it would be, uh, it could be really helpful, especially if you wanted things to be very uniform. If you're doing more like, you know, sort of like I am kind of winging it, I don't know. It's uh, it's fine. All right, so I'm going to try this again. And um, so the thing to keep in mind if you're going to do something like this, 
How would you take out a single French knot and a series of other French knot? I always have removed all of them. Oh, um, yes. <laughs> right. So if you just have one French knot that you that you want to remove and not the whole group, um, that's going to be problematic. You can do it by taking the end and... Um, so I'll show you, I want to take this out, right? So you can cut this out and cut this, and then you're going to cut that. And then on the back, you're going to have this little end, right? Which now is going to cause perhaps problems. Where is it? Here. Okay which here, so here's my end, right? So what I would do is I would take a thread and I would just stitch this down. Um, where is my thread? Here it is. I would take my thread and where is it? Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna weave into this. I can't believe you cut that on the cocoon. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take this little end, and I'm actually going to just weave this thread so that I'm attaching it in here, and it's not going to go anywhere. Um, and that's how I'm going to keep it from going somewhere else. <laughs> Fearless. Uh, fearless or just, you know, kind of whatever. Okay. All right. So I'm going to come back up now where I cut out that, that French knot. I'm going to go right back up and I'm going to try to find that hole. There we go. And I'm going to do, we're going to do a redo. A carrier rod, byproduct of making silk thread. Oh, Cindy, that's interesting. Um, I did not know that. So I'm going in here and I'm making sure that my tension, I'm really keeping that tension because that's what's happening when I'm doing these French knots and the tension isn't being pulled. I'm getting like this little loop here instead of a nice French knot. So... That's better. This one's kind of a little bit of a mess. I purchased them from Fiber on a Whim. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so there's kind of a bigger gap between this and this. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to leave it be. And I'm going to move on now to, um, I may add something in here. I may do something else. I don't know. Um, well, maybe I will add one more right here. I'll do one more right here. And here's the thing about all this stuff. You know, if you make a mess of it, like what's the worst that's going to happen? You just have to do it over. Or you lose like, you know, I've been enjoying your beautiful stitching and tips. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, I figure like if something doesn't work out, well, so I'll rip it out. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not the worst thing. All right. So there, there it is. Kind of fun, right? <laughs> and here's the half that I painted, dyed. I'll do something with it. It's still a little... A little it's got a little something going on or cover it up or cover it up exactly but now I thought well these things are really weird and interesting so maybe I'll maybe I'll do something with them and it's almost like I mean you can sort of pull this apart a little bit but like I'm pulling it right 
but I kind of like it twisted up. I think I can just tear that in half. But it's kind of cool because you get these sort of weird shapes. So that's fun. So maybe I just put it somewhere. Okay, let's let's go back a little. Maybe I put it... Maybe I sort of put it here. Does it feel like paper? Yeah. Is the Dorset class more advanced sewers or can... No. It's um, the Dorset button class, for those of you who are, are on the fence about it, it's three hours. It's a three-hour class. And um, I am going to be showing a basic Dorset button, and you can just do that. And the basic dors Dorset button is a blanket stitch around a, pla a ring of some kind, whatever the ring is. Or you can, um, uh, and then I show you how to do the little spokes, and then it's a whipped woven circle. So th that's it. And if that's, and if that's uh, you know, if you're a beginner, then that may be all you you know, you, you set yourself up with that goal. I'm just going to come away. I'll be happy with it. one dorset button, you know. But for more advanced, we I'll show how to experiment. But three hours, it sounds like it's a long time. It's not. It's a really short time. And in fact, I think everyone should come away with at least one dorset button finished. I will be hands-on. And, um, you know... We're going to, but no, you don't have to be an advanced stitcher. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to go in here, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to do something. What am I going to do? I've got it on a chenille. That's not great. Um, let's see. Everything I want to do is a wrapped stitch. So, well, you know what? I'm going to do a... I'm going to change this to a Milner's. And what is that thing you're working with? What is that thing you're working with? Oh, um, this is this this is the other thing that Carol sent me. This weird, I don't know. It's, you know, I don't know what it is. It's some sort of silk something. Someone said it was silk bark. Is that what you said? I can't remember. Somebody on here said... It's in the chat. Um, all right, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a little bouillon knot here. And I'm gonna just go from here to here. And it's stiff, it's kind of like a, cr some sort of cross between a paper and a carrier rod. Cindy told, hi Cindy. Cindy said that. Um, called a carrier rod. All right, so here's my little bouillon. And I don't want this to be bunched up. Catching the end. Okay, great. Hi. Um, I'm going to push this stuff away. So the Dorset Button Workshop, um, a bunch of you, I think, have signed up for that. Looks like silk that's been through a hot washing machine. <laughs> exactly. Um, for the Dorset Button Workshop, y you can go, you can be as insanely inventive and out there as you want. I mean, come on, it's, it's I'm, you know, it's, it's my workshop. I would expect nothing less for some of you to be crazy about it. Go nuts. Add all kinds of things. I'll show you some things that I've added, th some things that I'm, I've done. I spent all weekend making just dozens of them. I'm going to spend next weekend making more. And um, I'm incorporating all kinds of different materials that you wouldn't normally associate you know, we're thinking out of the box. But for someone who is just beginning and just wants to get down the basic dorset button, you're going to be able to do that too. It's for everybody. All right, so here I have my little um, bouillon, little bouillon knots here. I'm going to do one more sort of poking out from here. And I think I'm going to have this one. Where am I? going 
over here, like out into the, out into the field, right? And let's see, that's more than enough. Get my little pliers here and down um, so there we go yeah and I'm thinking I'm gonna do I kind of like it turned turning around like this you know like it's sort of like a collar carrier rod is a byproduct of making silk so um, I don't want this to I'm, I need this to kind of go over here so thank you, Gail. I'm so glad. So I'm manipulating it like I would a, a, a stiff piece of fabric, you know, and I kind of like this kind of sticking up like this. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to manipulate it. I want it to m move away. So I'm going to stitch in here. I'm going to stitch over here. I'm going to stitch this part. I want it to go around my open buttonhole between my trellis. You know, it's a little bit of a, a maze I've got going here. I've got to make sure it goes in the right places. I can pin these down if I want, or I can just keep doing what I'm doing, which is winging it, which is kind of what I do, and, um, and not worry too much about it. But I have a general idea of where I'm going with this thing. I like this this carrier rod. It's really interesting. It's very um, fabric. What type of thread are you using? The fuzzy one is Aurora. So it's got a little metallic thread in it, the Aurora. This is from the Thread Gatherer. And um, the other one I used was Oriana Linen, also from the Thread Gatherer. I love those, those two products that she does are just fabulous. All right, I'm going to cut that off. And now I think I might... So I know I want him, this bit, to kind of come around like this. And then I want this bit to pop up. And that's how I did it, like this, right? So I'm going to tack it down here with stitches, and I'm going to do it again here. And this is going to, going to stick up a little. So maybe I do some more uh, boyas over here, and you know, we'll um, I'll go from there. It's almost an hour, if you can believe it, and I've got to get ready for this meeting. So I'm not going to continue, but all of you are fabulous. Thank you so much for watching, and um, thank you, Jerry, for the dare. This was fun, and here, just as a reminder, is my little cocoon, and here is my other one. It looks like a collar. It does. It looks like a collar. Okay, everyone, have a great um, rest of your day, and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.